So the row over transgender athletes in sport rumbles on after the performance of swimmer Leah Thomas this week. Born William Thomas, who is ranked 462 in the male rankings, but transitioned and is now number one in the female rankings. Thomas set a pool record in winning the 500-yard freestyle in the Ivy League Championships in Boston. So to discuss this issue, I am joined by John Pike, who is a senior lecturer in philosophy and the ethics and metaphysics of sport, and also GB News' very own Nana Aquir. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> now, I want to talk, I'm going to come to you first, John, about this. Though. So this is as really set the internet mm. alight. I think a lot of people are very upset about this mm. because they see a, a kind of sense of injustice in that someone who, who transitions and can immediately win the... Not only that, but set new records. So yes. what, what, where do you think? What do you think about this? I, I think it is an obvious injustice. And I think this, uh, what we're seeing is bringing to fruition a process that's been going on over a number of years uh, with people taking their eye off the ball and not looking at the policies that, for Thomas example, Hedges the IOC has turn. put through, the International Olympic the Committee has put through. And this case brings out really the absurdity and the unfairness of the uh, moves towards liberalising the possibilities for uh, people like Thomas, uh, people who are male-bodied athletes to compete in, in women's sports. Yes. And we've just seen the clip there of the, of the race. It, it, it yeah. was won by quite a, a margin. Can I come to you, Nana? Like, mm. So, I mean, you see that, and that's a women's race, and, and uh, uh, Leah Thomas identifies as, as female, People would say, well, this is someone who has transitioned, so why shouldn't Leah Thomas be in the women's category in sport? What do you make of that? Well, I mean, she might identify as female. She might have gone through the gender reassignment. But it's not fair to put her in a category with women because women actually have a totally different physiology to men. So even if you change the way it looks on the outside and make it look as though you are a woman and you yourself personally feel that you are a woman, ultimately this category is a female category. And the reason why that is is because of the advantage that if you went against men, you, th there's no way the woman will, would win. And, and it's quite clear that the fact that Leah Thomas was not that great a swimmer when it was in the men's category, however, when she transitioned and went in the female category, she's now winning the race and beating records, and they, they say that even when they look at the way she won the race as well, she had such a reserve, they think she slightly held back so it didn't look too obvious that she was winning. Oh, really? Yeah. So, it, so it, it is, it's not fair as well to the actual women. What about the women themselves? Why is no-one considering how the women feel competing against this athlete? So this is an interesting one, John, because uh, when I talk to, to women about this who, who have a particular uh, understandable sensitivity to, or a sense of injustice about this, and they will say, well, you know, this, this individual went through puberty as yeah. a male mm. and that yeah. confers all kinds of advantages. Yeah. And it, it, would that be a fair argument? Well, that, that's all true. That's all true. So the argument that you need to present is that... Sorry, that, that people advocating for Thomas's right to to swim, mm. is that those male advantages don't matter from the point of view of fairness. Now, there's an argument there, but it's an argument for unisex sport. It's an argument for the abolition of women's sport. Yes. You could say, look, let's just everyone compete in the same competition. Uh, no women's sport. Uh, men will win all the time, almost mm. all the time, because of their biological advantages. Um, what you've got here, so that, that's a sort of 19th century chauvinist, male chauvinist argument yeah. that, that women have defeated. But it's kind of coherent in a way. What you've got here is actually a worse argument than that 19th century chauvinism. What you've got here is uh, that with kind of added postmodern uh, salt and pepper, yes. uh, added seasoning to say that, uh, well, Male advantage does matter, so we should have uh, a female category. But then male advantage doesn't matter for trans people to compete in that female category. But then what would you say to people who counter that and say, but, you know, there are women who are very weak and women who are very strong, and, and there's all, signs, yeah. all kinds of differentiation within sex categories. Yes, and that's why we have sport. And... What, what, exactly. we, what, we, exactly. what we do is see <laughs> what, what people's capacities are and how much they've trained. But women, as a, as a group, as a sex, cannot access male advantage because you can't change sex. I mean, we know that people can't change sex. It's a, it's a myth to suggest, and an anti-scientific myth to suggest, to suggest that you can actually change sex. Of course, people can present in, in different ways, and that, you know, that's not problematic in, 
in most circumstances. But there are circumstances in which bodies matter and yeah. sexed bodies matter. And sport is the most obvious one. The trouble is, if you push a line that says only gender identity matters and not sexed bodies, you uh, are left in a ridiculous position with respect to sport and women's sport. But it's a phenomenon that carries over into other aspects of the social world, mm. like prisons, like changing areas, like rape crisis centres and so right. on. But once you give up on the idea that um, you can trump sex with gender identity, everything else comes into play. So this is why the, se- why the, why the sport issue is really critical, because it's so obvious there okay. that sex matters. So can I continue on that, Nana? So, I mean, th- this idea that gender matters far more than, than biological sex is, is now sort of so widely accepted, isn't it? That just seems to be uh, the norm now in major institutions, in sporting institutions. And um, how does that make you feel about it? Uh, well, I, I think it's totally unacceptable and it's not true, is it? I mean, it's a delusion that you can... I mean, even if you change everything the way it looks, the physiology stays the same. So you are still physiologically male, even though you've changed and transitioned and you identify as a woman. So all the advantages that come with being male will still exist when you are a woman. And what do you say to the... So the counter-argument people would say, well, look, someone like Laurel Hubbard, someone like Leah Thomas, you know, this is someone who has gone through this procedure, which was probably not an easy thing to do. They, like, they've, 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 they've changed their identity, uh, the way that they feel about themselves. Uh, and, of course, part of these individuals' passion is sport. And should they have to then give up their passion? That seems unfair, doesn't it? Well, they, they may think it's unfair, but it's not fair to the women who are actually ultimately the ones who are going to lose out on this line of, uh, if we carry on, because it's always the women that lose out, isn't it? It'll always be that way. And the problem with um, these situations is exactly the fact that they will extend into wider issues in life where these people who are now categorised as women will be able to take advantage of those situations as well, whether they've been through some horrible process or not. I would say that there could be a transgender game. There needs to be a different category. But there aren't enough transgender athletes, by the looks of things, to do that. We, we That's an interesting we, one. We don't need that. What we, what we need is a protected women's category uh, that is for biological women, and then an open category, including men, uh, just a, a category for anyone and everyone who wants to, to compete in. Now, of course, biological men will tend to win in that category, uh, but I don't want to stop uh, Leah Thomas swimming. Leah Thomas should win. Sh- should swim in an open category. We certainly don't need a third category. And the reason we don't need a third category is that gender identity doesn't matter in sport. What you need is so just as my politics or my sexuality or anything like that doesn't count when I'm being selected for um, a team. Uh, this is just something that's not relevant to competition between bodies. Bodies matter, and competition between sex bodies matter. Uh, men have an advantage in that, so you need a, a female category and an open category for but, anyone. But what are the odds that that's going to happen? I mean, sorry, that, that's not going to happen. It's, I think it, this is all skewed towards men. It's almost like a form of misogyny in a way. The women have not been consulted about this, and the women would say that this is totally unfair. If you want to compete in sport, nobody's stopping you from competing in yeah. sport, but I just do think that as more people are changing gender and transgender becomes a more, uh, you know, becomes more commonplace, there should be some transgender games. They can compete against people who have similar advantages to them. And yet so often this kind of argument is, is, is framed as being a transphobic argument that you're against well, these people. Well, that's the way they silence you, isn't it? Because ultimately, as well, the way I see it, is it is a form of misogyny because it is the men who are pushing forward and insisting that they must be in the spaces that are actually female. Or And I accept that somebody says, OK, I feel like I, I need to be a woman and you've changed your gender in that respect. Uh, you haven't changed it physiologically, so you cannot expect to be um, competing on an equal level to women because you are ultimately not a woman. Is, is sport going to be the thing that changes this, this, this debate? Because I think, like, there's so much possibility with collision sports, for instance, yeah. where someone could be seriously yeah. hurt. Yeah. Yeah. And a lot of this is to do with safeguarding. Yes, absolutely. Is it going to be the sport issue that changes people's minds? I think, I, I think it, it may be, uh, partly because the unfairness is so obvious in these cases. And these, 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 these shots of, of Thomas swimming will be shown again and again mm. on YouTube. And no one, no one can really watch that and say, well, you know, that's fair enough. That's 
that straightforward. Some people do. <laughs> yeah, but only, only, only the transgender population, potentially. But do you know, I think a lot of transgender people are looking at that and thinking that's, that's not fair either. Absolutely. So it's not fair to tarnish them all with the same sort of yeah. perception well, the, that that's how it should be. The most vehement defence I've seen has actually been from trans allies, people mm. who are not themselves mm. trans. Exactly. And they look at this and they say, well, what's wrong with that? But uh, I think when we saw the footage earlier, uh, it, it does strike everyone, I think, as unfair. Yeah. Mm. And, where, you know, potentially, if, if something were to happen, some horrible injury, yeah. would that, I mean, is that what... We're going to have to wait. Yeah, yeah. It's, for, it's, 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 well, I, I uh, hope not, and I think that that sporting bodies need to attend to their responsibilities here for mm. safe and fair sport, for safe and fair sport for women. Yes. Now, Leah Thomas's uh, identity and I'm, I might say ego, although it's the rules that are the problem, not Leah Thomas. Yeah. Uh, uh, cannot be allowed to trump. Uh, safe and fair sport for, for women. I'd happily swim in a competition against Leah Thomas in an open category. It's for men to budge up, if you like, and make way for people who are not conforming to, 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 to stereotypes, who identify in a different way, but who have the biological advantages that I have to swim in a fair competition against me. And Thomas would beat me, but... <laughs> That's well, not a problem. I, I, we, could, we could talk about this for a long time, but uh, <laughs> unfortunately that is our time.